What's happening everyone? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the Uconnect media screen inside of the 2021 Jeep Cherokee. This is a fairly in-depth process, but we're going to be covering everything off. Climate control settings, different controls, how to set up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, connect different phones, and things like that. It's going to be an in-depth look, but if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, think about sharing it with your social networks, but let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun, and see what this Uconnect screen is all about. Let's take a peek at this Uconnect screen. So tons of different things to cover off here. First and foremost, right along the very top, as you can see there, we've got our active presets. We've got 12 different presets that we can change in between. If we want to save a preset, we're just going to change the station that we want. And we're just going to press and hold one of the options there in order to be able to set it into place. We can change between AM, FM, Sirius XM, or any of our other available sources. We've got a hot button press for our map, as well as turning our HD radio on or off. We can browse between our presets a slightly different way, which means we can easily toss them out so we can garbage them if we need to. And we've also got the option of changing between our different stations. We can seek out from there. We can tune to a different station if we want to this way. So just type in and go, changing a station out that way. We can adjust our audio there as well. So we can do our balance fade. We've got our equalizer, so treble, change out our treble mid-range bass, speed adjusted volume, and then we've got our basic surround sound as well. Moving back, we also do have our climate control settings. So we do have some more advanced climate control settings a little bit further down, so as you can see there, but we've got some good ones throughout this middle screen there. So taking a look, we can adjust what's going on with that actual fan control. Is it going to our windshield face or to our feet? We've also got our max air conditioning, our air conditioning, air circulation, our auto, front and rear, and we do have dual zone climate control. So if somebody likes things a little bit warmer, we've got that option to easily set that up. We can sync it back to whatever that driver's side setting is. Now the control buttons, we can also access along the bottom screen there also. So by pressing controls, if the vehicle was equipped with those heated and ventilated seats, those would show up. We've got our heated wheel, backup camera, and we can jump into our settings there, which we'll get to the settings in just a second. Moving back into our climate, we can set our fan speed as well, if we really want to go that route. And we also have the option of doing it a little bit further down as well. Moving into our U-Apps. So our U-Apps essentially give us the option of looking at everything that's available inside of the vehicle. So going between our different pages there, we can kind of see that it's literally everything in a nutshell. But let's go through some of the basics. We've got our Sirius XM travel link. We've got a hot button press for our driver heated or cooled seat. Same thing with the passenger. Projection management has to do with our cell phone. So the vehicle is equipped with Android Auto Apple CarPlay capabilities. This is going to be the summary screen of all of our connected devices for Android Auto Apple CarPlay. This is going to be the screen that we're going to go to to see all of our actively connected devices strictly for Bluetooth. But we'll get to that one in just a second when we cover off the phone. Wi-Fi hotspot, the vehicle is equipped with an onboard modem, which we can means we can use it as a wireless hotspot for up to 10 devices. We do need a data only plan in order to be able to do that. We've got our SOS or our assistant. We can activate our services. We've got some basic for navigation. We've got our off-road pages there as well. So taking a look at our off-road pages there. So a ton of different options that are available. We can see what's going on with our steering angle. We can look at our power transfer unit, looking at our accessory gauges. Like, yeah, we could see it on that cluster screen, but having the option of having everything up and high like this is great. We can see exactly where we are for latitude, longitude. We can see the pitch and roll as we're driving as well. And we can also select the terrain. And then clicking back out from there. And we've also got off to the other side, our app manager. We've got a hot button press for the backup camera as well. So we don't need to be in reverse. We can turn our heated steering wheel on or off. We've got our media, climate controls, navigation, and a number of other things. And that's gonna be the basics of the apps. Moving into factory navigation is very straightforward. We can set up a home or a work address. We can select where we wanna to go to. So a recently done address, point of interest, icons, etc. Searching for an actual address is very straightforward. So all you're gonna do is start typing, press okay. We can kind of adjust from there, space out, and then we start to type in an address there, press okay. And it's gonna let us know kind of what's going on, what's close. We press that button there, and as you can see, we can root to it. So we press root, we can save it out if we want to. We can avoid certain things. We can look at some added root options. We'll get to the root options in just a second, but let's go go. So it lets us know what's going on with the root itself. As we jump inside, we've got our, the option of going full screen with it. We can repeat directions. We can mute the guidance if we don't want the, the thing talking to us if we want to do. And we can also jump into our settings. And this is where we get into some different options there. So looking at our map, we can jump between different options. So if we want our map appearance to be a default setting, we've got our, our current street displayed. We've also got our auto zoom. So as we're coming to an upcoming turn, it's going to zoom in on the map for us to let us know. We've got options for our vehicle icon, point of interest icons, and a number of other things. Moving back, we've got our speed limit, which if the vehicle picks up on the speed limit there, it's going to announce the warning to us. That's a matter of personal preference. That one personally drives me nuts, but it's your call. 
our guidance, play guidance, yes or no, do we want the voice guidance or do we just want the turn by turn display inside of the cluster screen as well, which is great. So as we start to drive, it's going to let us know which way we're going in the actual cluster screen. We've got an option for the lane recommendation and our different route options. So if we want to avoid freeways, toll roads, things like that, we can select whatever options we want to and it's dynamically going to update our map based off of our preferences. Moving back again, we've got our GPS coordinates, map updates, and then our basic about settings. Now, as you can see there, we currently do have an active map, so we push that up in order to be able to stop the guidance. So we go stop guidance, stop the destination, and it's canceled out for us as well. So using this is very straightforward. Jumping back into our menu again, we've got a ton of different options. Again, moving back into our navigation settings if we want to go through some other options there. And that's going to be factory navigation in a nutshell. Next up, looking at phones. So we do have the option of e easily connecting an Android and an iPhone device. Let's start off on the iPhone side of things. So what we're gonna do first and foremost on our phone, make sure the Bluetooth is turned on and no phone is paired. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to connect a phone. So Bluetooth, we've got that turned on right now. We're just gonna jump into pairing. We're gonna go into paired phone and devices. Nothing's connected. So we're just gonna hit add a device and we're just gonna wait for Uconnect to show up on the screen there. There we go. So as you can see, Uconnect has shown up. So we're just gonna press that in order to be able to connect. Okay, and we need to make sure that the pin numbers match up, which in this case they do. So we're gonna hit yes. And on the phone, we're just gonna hit pair. Okay, do I want all of my contacts and favorites to sync? Yes. And as you can see there, pairing is now successful. So we hit okay. Now one of the nice things is that when we're connected through Apple, when we're connected over Bluetooth on our Apple device, we can use the voice command button in order to be able to activate Siri, which is kind of nice. Pressing OK, we can X out of that as well. So I am now fully connected there. We jump back into my phone. We've got different contacts, recents, contacts. We've got my keypad, and we've got that pairing option there again. So it's very straightforward in order to be able to connect a device. Now we do have the option of setting up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which are very straightforward. So if we start off on the Apple CarPlay side of things, we're just gonna take that USB cable, plug it into our available USB port. Opposite end of the cable, we're just gonna plug it into the phone and watch this. Okay, do we want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, we want to allow that. And as you can see there, my phone is connected. So we've got my phone, got my messages. And one of the nice things is that if the vehicle is not equipped with factory navigation, don't worry about it because we can use Apple Maps, we can use Google Maps, or we can use Waze directly through this middle screen. Now, one of the nice things is that if we are connected, so as you can see there, we are fully connected, but if we're connected to CarPlay, we've got the option of adjusting what's going on with our CarPlay settings. So we look at our car, we can customize the actual tray. So if you have a tendency to, oh, I don't know, maybe listen to podcasts a bit more, we drag that up to the top. And as you can see there on our home screen, it's adjusted that. If we prefer to use Google Maps, we drive that up as well. And as you can see, it's dynamically updating the screen for us. If you've played around with some things or if you've kind of removed too many things, we can adjust it, we can add it back in from there, or we can just do a reset in order to bring it back to that factory default instead. As you can see, back to the factory default, bring it back up, that's gonna be the basics of the screen there. Now, as we jump into settings, so if we ever wanna remove the phone, all we're gonna do is go into our phone Bluetooth and we go into our projection manager. We can disconnect CarPlay if we want to. So as you can see there, it's now disconnected. We can jump back into my phone if we wanted to go that way. We can fully disconnect this thing as well because when we jump back into our phone again, so phone Bluetooth, projection manager, projection manager, we've got my phone there so we can enable it or we can completely forget the device. So as you can see there, completely connect, disconnected, we can disable projection as well, which means that if we're connected, it's not going to use Apple CarPlay instead. What it's going to do is it's going to charge the phone up. So I'm charging, not using CarPlay, but I am still connected over Bluetooth. And it's really that simple adding in an iPhone to this thing. We can easily disconnect it from there. Setting up an Android device is literally the exact same process. So on your phone, all you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do is go into your Bluetooth settings. So Bluetooth, and as you can see there, we're just going to scan for active devices after we hit add device. So we're just gonna wait for Uconnect to show up there under available devices. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, Uconnect is there. So we're just gonna connect in. Okay, there we go. Same thing, make sure that the pin numbers are correct. Yes and yes. All right, do we wanna make it the favorite phone? Yes or no, but first we wanna allow access to our messages, allow access to our contacts, make that favorite phone, yes or no. So we do have the option of setting a favorite phone if we want to, we can easily delete a phone if we need to as well. So we just delete phone and as you can see, it's strictly the Galaxy that's connected there. Now setting up Android Auto is literally the exact same process, but if we jump back into the phone, as you can see, exact same thing, we've got our favorites, contacts, etc. Connecting, same idea, we're just gonna plug into any available USB port. 
clicked in. Same idea, opposite end of the cable. We're just gonna plug that into our phone and we're gonna give it a few seconds. So five, four, three, two, and allow access to phone data. Yeah, we wanna make sure we allow that. And ooh, you know what? The reason why this actually isn't working because pairing, projection manager, I turned it off. So let's turn it back on again. Android Auto, we wanna hit next on that. Okay, and as you can see there, we are now fully connected. So we've got app, we've got Google Maps, I should say, that are playing through the middle there. Now, very similar to the Apple side of things, we do have the option of customizing the tray if we want to. So going into Android Auto, as you can see there, we've got our basic settings. We can customize the launcher if we want to. So we can just do a drag and drop, similar to the Apple side of things. We can use our Google Detection, Google Assistant, and a number of other things. Now, one thing to note, we don't have the option for wireless Android Auto inside of this vehicle. Unfortunately, we do have to be connected through a wired connection there. But as you can see there, fully disconnected there, very simply. Jumping back into pairing, projection manager. We can easily forget our devices as well if we're getting rid of the vehicle. Pair devices, we are fully connected there. So in order to be able to disable or delete, we're just gonna go into our settings, delete phone. And as you can see, the phone is now fully disconnected from the vehicle. All right, and lastly, we do have our settings button along the bottom there as well. And that's gonna give us a ton of different options that are available. So we can change between either English, Spanish, or French. We can set up the basics for a display as well. So if you have a few different preferences, if you wanna manually adjust the brightness of the screen, we can easily do that. We can set our theme, that beeping that we get, we can turn it off if we really want to. We've got different timeouts and different alerts and things like that. Moving into our units, we can go US metric or custom our voice, we've got a few different options there as well. So our command list, if we press the voice command button on the steering wheel, this is going to be the command list. So we can exit that if we don't want to have that list showing up. Again, that one's going to be a matter of personal preference. And then we've got our brief versus our advanced, our, our detailed mode. I want you to listen to something for a second. 94.9. Tuning to 94.9 FM. Okay, so it gave us a notification letting us know that it was changing. But if we go to brief instead, listen to this. 97.7. Okay, it changed the station, but it didn't tell us. Now that's one of the nice things is that that response, li response length essentially is in advanced mode. So it's not gonna give us as many notifications. Our clock settings, we can go between a couple different things. So 12 and 24 hour mode, we can manually set or let the vehicle determine what the temperature, what the temperature, what the time should be based off of the GPS location, or we can manually set it if we want to. Moving back, we've got basics for our camera. So that park review back up the delay. So as we go to revert, put the vehicle in reverse, is it going to be delayed? Yes or no? This one comes on immediately. And then that parking view, the guidelines. So the guidelines as we shift back, these are gonna be the guidelines. So whether or not that one shows up is going to be a matter of personal preference. Moving back in, as you can see, we've got some driver, some safety and driver assistance settings. So emergency braking, we can turn that one on if we really want to. So that emergency braking, I think is a great system, but if it drives you nuts, you've got that option of turning it off if you wanted to. And you've also got the option of setting on the sensitivity level. Moving back, we've got our lane sense or early warning detection. Let's us know as we start to veer off into a lane and that signal strength there as well. Side distance indicators, we've got our perk sense as well, so that reverse sensing system, whether it's just the sound on the display as well, the volume of it for not only the front, but also the rear park sense. So we do have a forward and a reverse sensing system, that reverse braking assist. So as we're backing up, if there's an obstacle there, the vehicle's automatically going to brake for us. So we can adjust that one, turn it on or off if we'd like to. Blind spot system lets us know if anybody's under the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Do we want to turn that system off? Lights or a chime as well as the light. So I do recommend at a minimum keeping it on the lights because it's going to highlight orange, letting us know if anybody's under the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Let's actually show you what that looks like on the outside there. So if you take a look, back on that that little orange thing that highlighted there for that briefest of second that's going to be that blind spot system so it lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle now as we start to move down a little bit more as you can see there we've got our hill start assist as well as our tire fill assist Next up, moving into our mirrors and wipers. So as you can see there, we've got our rain sensing wipers is gonna be the big one there. So I do recommend keeping that rain sensing wiper on for the most part. If you're going into a car wash, make sure you're turning that one off because with wipers on, it's gonna go crazy as you drive. So definitely recommend just making sure you switch that one off before you go into a car wash. Moving down, we've got our brakes. So our auto parking brake, as well as our brake service. We can reset that one if we need to. 
we've got our lights or so different headlight delays, our auto dimming high beams as well. So that's one of the nice things because the vehicle essentially, if it's too dark out, it's going to flip the high beams on automatically. If it senses an oncoming vehicle, it's automatically going to dim them for us, which is great before flipping them back on again. So I love the fact that we've got that option there. Moving into our seats and comfort. So the easy exit seats, if that one's turned on and we turn the vehicle off, it's automatically going to lower and then back the seats up for us. And then when we go to remote start the vehicle or all start regardless, are the heated vented seats and the heated steering wheel are going to come on automatically. Moving down, we've got our key off options. So same idea. So we've got the option of selecting our easy seats, our audio settings. So we've got, again, same thing. We've already seen the screen, but our treble mid-range bass, we can select the balance as well. Phone Bluetooth, so same idea. We've got some more basics there, which we can also access through that phone button there. If you're a heavy Sirius XM user, you've got a few different options. So channel skip, if you have a preference and don't listen to certain stations, you can deselect whichever ones you don't, or you can just select the ones that you typically would listen to. So as we're selecting between different stations, it's going to go between your personal favorites instead. We've got the basic for our subscription information, and then we've got our reset, so we can clear all personal data, or we can remove it back, or reset it, I should say, back to our factory default. Useful if you're ever selling the vehicle. And then we've got basics for our system information as well. And that is going to be the basics of this Uconnect media screen. Well, folks, that was an in-depth look at the Uconnect media screen. What did you think? If you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues you might be having. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your social networks. And until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe.